you guys had sent us the box and uh, we received it, put it on the table next to it. Um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We kind of, you know, adjusted them to the same height and steered the beam in. And uh, pretty much it, you know, it was fairly straightforward to get it mode locking. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and from here, the femtosecond pulses um, come up through the uh, scanning system and are scanned across the sample. Uh, we've removed the microscope stage right now. Uh -huh. But uh, the finished product will look somewhat, somewhat like this. Uh, objective lens here, pretty much, and that's really the only functionality. Mm -hmm. And this happens to be single photon, so we have a uh, 473 uh, DPSS mm -hmm. laser scanning the sample. Um, and in this case, we're looking at uh, zebra fish. Mm -hmm. So a small, small fish. You know, cross-linked polymer. You know, it's like jello, basically. And when this is melted, uh, we put the fish inside a droplet mm -hmm. and then cool it down. And the fish will be alive for several days. And you can image the uh, brain activity in the fish. So it will be fixed in this? Yeah. Gel, okay. And um, diameter. Uh -huh. Cells, you know? And they have maybe tens of thousands. Tens of thousands? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, get, eventually they'll get kind of big. And those two, these are maybe a week, one week. Uh -huh. One week. And uh, uh, we have some that were two days old. laser at a um, wavelength around 800 nanometers, and so uh, we're exciting dyes approximately around the 400 nanometer, uh, more or less based on fluorescein. Uh, one is called Oregon Green Vapta, another is called uh, Flow 4. ways to inject them into the system. Uh, but, you know, we have col uh, collaborators who also look at genetically encoded pro uh, proteins, like uh, GFP, fluorescent mm -hmm. proteins, mm -hmm. and uh, other uh, fluorescent proteins. Um, this is a typical experiment. How long do you keep? Uh, so typically, uh, we image at about one frame per second. And uh, in the case of uh, mammalian tissues, we can image for, uh, you know, take a series of images for hours at a time. And we can repeat the imaging and do so-called chronic imaging so that imaging can be actually done, be over, done over a course of months for the same animal. With the zebrafish, uh, you could probably take, you know, uh, images for several days about as long as the animal can last in this agarus. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, on the other end, we're also interested in sort of faster calcium dynamics. So we also want to image at higher frame rates. Mm -hmm. So we have also have systems that scan at frame rates up to 200 frames per second, uh, depending on how many lines you take. And mm -hmm. this would be sort of look, trying to look at single action potentials mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with calcium indicators. Uh, and um, this can really only be done in vivo with multi-photon microscopy. Mm -hmm.
between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, there's not much difference in the performance we found. But it more or less runs the same, same stability, same wavelength, everything is the same. Mm -hmm. Daniel is going to turn on the spectrometer. Mm -hmm. I mean, the light turned green, so it's pretty much, uh, alignment is very stable over months, as long as it's aligned once every month or so. Mm -hmm. um, and the cavity doesn't have to be aligned at all. The only alignment issue is the pump, pump laser. Uh -huh. um, we get an output of around. What is the pump power now? The pump power is around probably six or seven watts. Mm -hmm. system uh, with commercial focal scanner will cost you probably a million dollars when you add the laser to the scanning system. And bring that down by a factor of 10, say at around $100,000, it's very reasonable for a new investigator to invest in that as part of the, their personal lab you know, equipment. So 